hey, so you want to be a part of an esports team. And that's great. Maybe you are a really good gamer and you've been uh, sought out by somebody who wants to recruit you to play on their team. Um, or maybe you're somebody that just wants to be a part of the team or uh, start a team. And anyways, this video uh, I hope can help somehow. I just wanted to put something out on the internet to uh, be a bit of a resource for people that are, are slowly starting to get into uh, esports and uh, haven't really had the experience of playing on a team um, especially at a, a level now where so many things are crucial as far as uh, image and uh, branding and so forth so I just wanted to go over a few uh, keys to remember if you are considering getting involved with an esports team so hope you enjoy First, a little background uh, about myself. My name is Brad Bowden. Um, I'm currently a member of the men's Canadian sledge hockey team. I'm currently injured, but uh, I've had a close to a 20 year or more uh, career with them. I have uh, been to over six uh, Olympics. Um, I've won two gold medals, uh, a silver and a bronze, um, as well as um, multiple world championships, uh, Canada games, gold medal, um, you name it, uh, I, I've won it. And uh, I have been on uh, teams as long as I can remember, since the age of 11 years. Um, and it's a great experience. I'm, I'm very uh, grateful for all of the experience that I had and the places I got to go and the people that I got to meet. Um, but uh, a lot of things that I learned along the way were very hard to uh, really adapt to. And uh, that's why I wanted to create this video just to kind of give you guys a heads up to some um, ideas and, and methods that you might want to implement and uh, consider when you are uh, signing on with somebody who is uh, an owner of any sports team or starting a team. Um, a lot of this stuff is hopefully common knowledge to a lot of people. Um, this isn't a video uh, about, you know, hey, you're a horrible person, you need to stop being who you are. It's not about that at all. It's just kind of something to get you thinking a little bit more about uh, the team aspect and uh, what's involved and, and some of the things that you should avoid and some of the things that you should do or at least consider when you uh, sign on and agree to uh, be a part of a, a team. And I, I guess this could apply to anybody who wants to be a part of any kind of team really but uh, I have found myself closer and closer to uh, people that have been involved in esports and uh, I felt like this was just uh, something that maybe I, I'd be interested in doing to help anybody out there is not too sure what they're getting into or, or how to act. So hopefully this helps you out. So I want to touch on professionalism. So when I compete, uh, our team every year has an athlete agreement that we sign. It's about 10 or 12 pages long. It's a legal document, big organization. Uh, they have a, a huge legal team that uh, puts a, a lot of hours behind putting together these athlete agreements um, and the athlete agreements are to protect the organization as well as protect the, uh, the best interests of the players uh, and just kind of basically lay out the agreement and just kind of set something forward so that people have an understanding of, of what's at stake. So that's usually how things start when you sign on with a team. Uh, there's usually some kind of code of conduct or something like that. But a lot of uh, agreements now also have things connected to how you use your social media. So there's a social media code of conduct that goes along with these uh, agreements as well. So this is all basically connected because the organization that is supporting you, that you are competing under, has a brand image. They have a vision or a mission that they want people to be aware of and they want you to help promote that vision and be a positive influence in the community and make them basically look good. Um, who wouldn't want to look good, right? If you're going to invest money in somebody, you don't want to uh, piss it away on somebody that's going to make you look like a, an idiot and you know, you're, you're paying for it. So you need to take this serious. That's why a lot of people make you sign legal documents or code of conducts and stuff like that so that there's an understanding. So if you break that code of conduct, 
then there's no argument because the rules have been laid out in front of you. So usually that's uh, par for the course. So a lot of agreements now contain uh, parts where they have a social media code of conduct and everybody has to basically abide by these rules that are set out by the team or organization and uh, they're usually uh, a page long and kind of set with a, a, a few do's and don'ts and uh, just kind of giving you an idea of how to stay on track to promote the vision and the mission that the organization or team has and basically help you understand how to utilize social media so that uh, um, their brand is is consistent with how they want to be viewed so uh, when I say so social media I, I don't think we're just talking about Twitter uh, Facebook Instagram I think we're also talking about any of the live streaming sites as well because I think let's face it if, if you're a, a, a pro player chances are you probably stream on the side or maybe you're full-time and uh, maybe you compete on the side who knows but that's a window into your life and uh, somebody can just go on and, and see how you act and, and it's basically just uh, some, a way for somebody to just see you in your true form so you got to be really careful um, about how you come across when you're streaming live because you really don't know who's watching there could be a potential sponsor who's interested in investing watching you and uh, if you say the wrong thing that could jeopardize any kind of opportunity for the rest of your team so you always have to be aware of who's watching so hopefully uh, you're behaving yourself and you're trying to act in a professional manner to represent your team and make sure that uh, everything that you do is consistent with the uh, brand that uh, that you're representing So something that you might want to consider thinking about is if if you're in a room and a sponsor or a potential sponsor walks in and they only have one chance to meet you or anybody from your team, how do you want to be perceived? Do you want to be remembered as being the jackass that was running his mouth and swearing all the time and um, dressed like an idiot and you know didn't shower or comb his hair or anything like that? I mean, these little things all add up. They all add up at the end of the day because it's how you want to be perceived. You want to be taken professionally. So, um, you know, do all of the little things that you can to, to help, you know, at least make yourself look professional to anybody that might be watching or want to follow and support you and, and your organization or team. So when I went over a few agreements that I had to sign over the past couple years and I looked at a lot of the social media guidelines, mostly um, I felt that a lot of it was fair, but I couldn't help but feel like it was also kind of restraining too because personally I like to express who I am. I, I have strong opinions about uh, the way things are. Uh, I, I curse a lot. Um, I mean, everybody's got their opinions. Everybody's a person and, and is entitled to how they how they feel about something. But when you are a part of a team, you have to really make sure that you're not saying anything on a on a public forum that is going to jeopardize uh, any kind of sponsorship opportunities or um, tarnish the reputation of the organization or team that you're representing. So a few don'ts. I'm going to touch on some do's, I guess, if you really need to hear some do's, but I'm going to touch on a few don'ts. So first, don't don't make any homophobic comments. We live in a very uh, diverse world now, um, and a, a lot of people are very, very sensitive to a lot of things. And, uh, you know, a lot of your fans, let's face it, might have different sexual preferences and stuff like that. So why would you want to offend those people? Um, be respectful to all of your fans, all the people that support you. Uh, the same with the with racism. Don't obviously say anything racist. I don't think that needs to really be said much. Uh, keep politics and religion out of it. Uh, in my opinion, it's never good. Too many people have opinions about religion and politics, and it seems harmless, but it's really just best to keep that out of social media, keep that off your stream, um, 
because you never know how it's going to be taken or you know someone might just take it and just blow it right up and it might not be too good for you in the end so i highly suggest you don't really discuss much about politics or religion uh, on your social media or in your streams or at all um, try to cut down swear words uh, a lot of young people might be watching and i know that you know if you are doing your thing you might think you know well this is how i am and if people don't like it that's fine you know like that's okay but uh, you have to realize that like i said it's about the team and if you want fans a lot of young people might be your fans you want young people watching your stream for example ninja is cutting down his swearing and it's a good move because you know a lot of his fan base is is, is really young and really like what parent wants their child watching you if you're going to be swearing and teaching them all these you know new words that they're going to have to uh, give them heck for at the end of the day so um, try to cut down on your swearing I mean every now and then things slip up or whatever but obviously don't don't say anything too crazy be aware of who you follow who you tweet at uh, this is something that I uh, really had to be conscious of when with Twitter uh, especially who you follow uh, you know you don't want to you know people might go through who you follow and see that you follow somebody in, inappropriate stuff like that and that might look kind of bad if, if a sponsor's checking out to see you know who you follow and what kind of person you might be and all that stuff so it never really looks good at the end of the day so just just kind of keep it tidy and, and just uh, try to be aware of who you follow and, and who you tweet at and so forth keep it in the DMs if you can so basically be as close as you can be to a choir boy and and I <laughs> and it sucks like I, I like I said I, I've got opinions I, I like to have fun and express myself and a lot of those opinions aren't really something that people are gonna agree with or whatever but uh, you know when it when it comes down to what's best for the team um, it's it's not really hard to to, to pick a side you're gonna want to do the right thing and, and just kind of swallow some of uh, your opinions and, and kind of just uh, go along and, and be the best that you can be and be respectful and and it feels like you might be losing a bit of who you are and, and be constrained a little bit but if you're gonna be a part of a team that's that's what it takes so some ideas for things that you can do that are positive that could help you is um, be interactive with your fans uh, be appreciative um, show them that you're grateful for their support uh, reply to somebody who, who tweets at you um, don't reply to anybody that's being hateful or anything like that just don't even stoop to their level but uh, you know because people will see that you've got a short fuse and you know you might say something that you don't want to come up later that's inappropriate so try to stay away from doing anything like that uh, support other other people that are kind of aspiring to do what you're doing you know you've got an opportunity to to play video games and uh, be a part of a team and possibly travel and have it paid for uh, it's pretty awesome so you know other people are dreaming to do that too a lot of young people uh, especially are, are starting to look more and more to get into to esports and you know as far as uh, how everything in the world's going uh, it's going to be it's going to be the norm people are going to be aspiring to be uh, future uh, possible Olympic esports athletes so uh, you, you want to help those people uh, keep their passion alive that always makes you look good and uh, you know why wouldn't you want to support them anyways because technically they're they're striving to towards the same go dreams and goals that you are so it's always good to support other people as well so enough about social media I just wanted to touch a little bit about uh, what happens once you do have sponsors and uh, how to keep them happy so when I was uh, competing we had a a list of sponsors that were outlined to us that we were only allowed to use when we were with the team and when we were competing so whenever we were in the public eye we were only allowed to wear certain clothes uh, drink certain drinks um, eat certain foods like basically we were sponsored by certain companies so those were the products that we used because they are investing a lot of money into your team to help you out so now it's your turn to help them out and uh, at least give the uh, illusion that you love their product and that's all you use and everybody else should use it and it's great so you always got to make sure that 
whatever you're doing, uh, you're not slandering the product. Their product is the best. Don't mention their competitors and uh, never, you know, never forget, you know, the hand that feeds you basically. So uh, if you end up doing something stupid and saying, you know, oh, uh, this product sucks. Let's say you're sponsored by Gatorade or something and you're, you're drinking Gatorade and you hate it. And then you say, oh, this, this stuff is crap on your live stream then that could potentially damage the opportunity to keep that sponsor for the rest of your team. So you really got to be aware of that. So if you don't like it, you don't have to drink it, but don't let people know that you don't like it. Sometimes I see people drinking uh, Red Bull who are sponsored by Monster on their streams, and there's clearly like a sponsorship logo at the bottom that says sponsored by Monster. And then you see them on stream drinking Red Bull, and it's like, okay, well, these people must be... <laughs> upset that they're investing this money and here you are drinking uh, Red Bull on on stream or at this tournament so uh, that's always never a good way to go when uh, dealing with sponsors and, and you know using the competitors products so that's just something to keep in mind as well so we're winding down to the end of the video here I'm sorry that it's kind of getting a little bit long but like I said I just wanted to put this out there so um, just to kind of touch back on what I said in the beginning. Uh, it's not easy to pretend to be something that you're not. And in a way, you're not really you're not really being something that you're not. You're just kind of doing the right thing for the team. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I struggle sometimes with social media um, competing as an athlete because there's things that I want to tweet out or there's a funny quote that I want to put out there or there's somebody that I want to tweet at. But um, ultimately, you always got to think, you know, uh, at the end of the day what's best for the team so is it is it best that I tweet out a, a comment at uh, you know uh, Donald Trump about something he's doing or express a religious view that might backfire on me and uh, have it blow up and make me look like a, a, a jerk somehow I don't know you never know how things are gonna go on the internet somebody could just totally blow something out of the water and way out of proportion and it could end up not looking too good for you or, or the, the team that you're on so uh, I hope that this video helps um, I'm sorry about the sound quality uh, I'm just kind of recording on my headset here but I wanted to whip something together just to kind of help anybody that was interested in in learning a, a few things that I've learned along the way as a elite athlete and uh, if there's any questions that you have feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you but uh, really am uh, a huge supporter of the esports movement and if you are a young person who's looking to get into it, uh, I wish you all the best. I think it's it's an amazing it's an amazing world. It's an amazing time to be alive, and with all this technology and opportunity that we have to uh, to be involved and reach out and, and meet new people and, and compete, doing something that we love. And uh, I love video games, and they've offered me a, a huge outlet in my life. And uh, I know that many other people um, have had the same experiences too. And uh, I really can't wait to uh, see what the future holds for esports, and hopefully uh, I will see you guys on TV competing for your country. But uh, all the best, and take care.